Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Identifying Pattern Transitions of Mind and Brain in Psychotherapy, the Nonlinear Dynamics of Human Change Processes. It is presented by Gunter Schiepek, PhD from the Paracelsus Medical University, Institute of Synergetics and Psychotherapy Research in Salzburg, Austria. My name is Judy O'Rourke, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. We're delighted to bring you this educational web seminar presented by LabRoots. LabRoots is the leading scientific social networking website and producer of educational virtual events and webinars. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want during the presentation. Simply click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen and type your questions into the drop-down box. Our speaker will respond to your questions via email following the presentation. If you have any trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, please click on the Ask a Question box to let us know that you're experiencing a problem. This presentation is educational and thus offers continuing education credits. Please click on the Continuing Education Credits tab located in the top right corner of the presentation window and follow the process to obtain your credits. Now, without further ado, please join me in welcoming Dr. Shipek. I will now turn the presentation over to him. Hello, everybody. Uh, I am speaking to you from Salzburg in Austria. So that's a town of uh, Mozart. And uh, we go to the topic of uh, pattern transitions in mind and brain. Um, I have three parts uh, in this uh, speech. Uh, the first is on mathematical modeling of human change dynamics at the psychological level. The second is on how to measure change dynamics that is on internet or app-based monitoring and feedback uh, in psychotherapy. And the third part is on self-organization of mind and brain. Uh, this is a short report uh, on our project uh, at a multi-level research on psychotherapy change process. Uh, first, uh, I will mention my co-workers, uh, which are very important persons here at our institute. That is uh, Magister Helmut Schöller and uh, uh, Catherine Bjorl, PhD at the Institute of Synergetics and Psychotherapy Research, and uh, co-workers in Marseille, France, uh, at the Institut de Neurosciences de Système, Professor Victor Hirsa and also Professor Mark Hütz at uh, uh, Jacobs University at Bremen. Uh, the one is a co-worker in our brain research, and the other is a cooperation partner in our mathematical uh, projects. Now, let's start. Uh, the basic idea of uh, investigating human change dynamics is uh, that uh, human beings and uh, subsystems of humans, like the brain, like mental systems, and so on, are uh, self-organizing systems. Uh, so we in investigate, we are interested in how self-organization takes place in nonlinear complex systems. And this uh, meta-theoretical concept, which exists uh, from synergetics or from chaos theory, can now be applied to neuro systems, to cognition, emotion, or behavior, that is uh, uh, to psychology, classical topics in psychology, and also to social systems, that is uh, pattern transition, pattern formation in human interaction systems, diets, uh, groups, teams, up to whole society. So um, this is a very interesting concept that uh, the principles uh, and also the methods which can be applied to self-organizing systems uh, can now be applied to quite different systems. The substrates are completely different, uh, but the concepts, the phenomena, and the methods are identical. Uh, I will start uh, with a mathematical model of change dynamics in psychotherapy. Uh, up to now, we have a lot of knowledge how psychotherapy works, 
uh, at the level of ingredients or uh, single factor factors which contribute to successful, more or less successful psychotherapy. But what we don't have up to now uh, are models which integrate these factors and which allow for an understanding of the uh, interconnectedness of the factors and of the non-linear interactions uh, of these factors. And uh, this was the starting point of a project uh, which tried to model uh, human change processes uh, at a mathematical level. Uh, for doing this, we introduced five uh, variables which describe uh, and uh, produce change. This is the intensity and the level of problems or symptom severity. Here it's uh, called P. The motivation for change and the successes that so is uh, the therapeutic progress and uh, the experience confidence in the progress by the patient. Insight, that is the degree patients try and are able to understand what's going uh, with their problems and symptoms, and the intensity of emotions, that is high levels of this E variable means uh, emotions uh, which are annoying and stressful and lower levels are less stressful uh, feelings and uh, feelings of joy and uh, of uh, uh, easy heartedness. So these are the contributors and now we try to understand how the interaction works and for this we define functions, mathematical functions uh, which, uh, which describe how uh, the input variable, for example, in this case, the problem intensity, creates motivation for change. The idea is that at very low levels of problems, no stress, uh, no worry, uh, there is no need to be motivated to change anything. If problem intensity increases, then the intensity of motivation also increases up to a specific level. Uh, and after or beyond this level of problem intensity, motivation decreases because uh, people uh, are uh, have no motivation to change such big intensities of uh, stress or problems. That is something uh, like, uh, hopelessness or helplessness. Uh, and the intensity, how this function increases, where the turning point is placed, and uh, the phase of this turning point, uh, this depends uh, on parameters which correspond uh, to personality traits or dispositions. In this kind, in this kind um, this position to be motivated or hopeful to can cope even with in very intense uh, problems. And if this uh, uh, parameter M is very low, so persons have no hope and no uh, reward expectation, uh, the function is very low, even high or low levels of problems do not create any motivation for change. And if the M parameter is very high. Person have uh, expectations of being fully capable to solve problems and to cope with stress. The level this is the green function here is very high and uh, only very, very intense problem intensities try, uh, can, can turn this uh, curve. Uh, so the shape is defined, uh, but the concrete shape uh, of this function depends on personal uh, personal uh, dispositions. Uh, this is the logic of the system, and we have uh, 16 functions describing how the variables, or in terms of synergetics uh, order parameters, interact to each other. 
uh, I cannot explain all functions because this is really very, uh, very big story. Uh, perhaps only one other function could be explained. So it is the relationship from problem or stress intensity to uh, worrying uh, or negative emotions. Um, if you have uh, very high competences in uh, coping with emotions, emotion regulation capacities, and uh, very high reward expectations and uh, dispositions for coping with stress, uh, this is the green curve. Uh, so uh, uh, even higher levels of problem intensity or stress do not create very intensive negative emotions uh, and so with uh, low uh, or negative intense problems emotions go down that is uh, this creates positive emotions this would be healthy and this would be a very uh, flexible way of coping with uh, normal problems and uh, if these dispositions are lower uh, since a blue curve occurs, uh, that is uh, with increasing levels of experience, stress emotions increase, uh, and later on they can be coped. And the uh, red curve shows uh, that with very low competences in, in emotional regulation and uh, hopeless uh, attitudes towards oneself or the world, um, even very low problem intensity, small doses of stress uh, activate very negative, stressful emotions, and only uh, these extreme levels can only cope by extreme behavior, for example, uh, self harm or uh, consuming drugs uh, or even suicidal attempts. That is a basic mechanism, for example, of borderline personality disorders. Now uh, we have uh, 16 of these functions, which are interrelated by five nonlinear uh, uh, equations. Uh, so, Parameters, uh, the control parameters in terms of synergetics and personality traits in terms of psychology are the therapeutic alliance or uh, the basic uh, option to uh, attach to other. Uh, cognitive competencies, mentalization and emotion regulation, behavioral resources, and trait motivation. These uh, these positions mediate and moderate the interactions, the nonlinear interaction between the variables in terms of synergetics, uh, the order parameters, and in terms of psychology, the states. So these variables may be interpreted as states, the parameters as straight. Uh, this is a matrix. Uh, which shows uh, the modifying or moderating effects of the parameters on the uh, functions between the variables or all the parameters. So the individual disposition forces uh, is based on the traits which moderate the functions. These are the five coupled nonlinear equation, differential equation. So this is a discrete model with a lot of nonlinear interactions. That is uh, the reason why these uh, equations can create chaos. And in a certain uh, region of parameter intensity, indeed the dynamics is chaotic. Here you see the, the dynamics of the five variables. Uh, here are the dynamics embedded uh, in a three-dimensional phase space, which is created by time delay coordinates. So you see a really beautiful and uh, typical uh, 
strange attractors or chaotic attractors. And here on the right, you have a specific effect of chaotic dynamics. This is a sensitive dependency of the dynamics on the initial conditions. So this is so-called butterfly effect. Um, if you start the system with almost the same initial values of the variables uh, within a comparatively short period of time, the dynamics uh, will exponentially diverge and uh, run in a complete different way. Um, this is a picture on a bifurcation, of bifurcation diagrams. Uh, on the x-axis of these diagrams, you have very uh, small steps of increasing parameters. Here the parameter A is the attachment or therapeutic alliance, uh, cognitive competencies, uh, behavioral resources, and trait motivation. So you increase your parameters step by step in a very, very small steps. And uh, on the y-axis, you see all the values, uh, the time series of uh, the variables, for example, success, uh, which is realized uh, over a longer period of time at one and the same uh, moment or one and the same value of the control parameter. Uh, you see these uh, pictures which shows that really you have uh, many realizing, realized uh, values at one and the same parameter. And then you change the parameter a little bit and you have other values. And these are these bifurcation diagrams, which are really typical for deterministic chaotic mechanism. Up, up to this moment, uh, the system surrounds really deterministically. So, so there is no fluctuation or noise terms added on this dynamics. What we see uh, is that uh, at a specific level of uh, the parameters, here we have the parameter C at a specific level of uh, 0 0.5. Uh, Specific dynamics is created, a chaotic dynamics, which is represent, represented by this uh, chaotic attractor. And at another level, in this period, uh, you get quite another, but also chaotic attractor. And in between, we changed the parameter uh, continuously, successively, continuously, from one uh, value to another, a little bit higher value we see uh, some kind of phase transitions. That is, uh, the attractors change the shape from one to the other. And this is exactly what synergetics describes. We can continuously, linearly increase the control parameter or control parameters. In this case, we have four. And we get a discontinuous jump uh, of the realized order parameter dynamics. That is what we call a phase or order transition. Um, now, a next step of this model was the realization of equations which describes the evolution of the control parameters. Uh, the control parameters are something like traits or dispositions, which uh, themselves can undergo an evolution by new experiences, uh, changed behavior, changed emotions, which uh, change also on the long term uh, the dynamics of the variables and the traits. Uh, so we have so we have both, uh, and both interact uh, the uh, states create changes in traits and vice versa, and the uh, order parameter dynamics creates an evolution of the control parameters. Uh, these are the uh, equations which describe the dynamics of the control parameters at a slower time scale. And indeed, in psychology, we can see that the evolution of traits, that is personality uh, development, 
takes place at a lower and uh, slower time scale than the dynamics of the trade. So we have both and both together the state trade dynamics, state trade interaction explains um, personality change which is created by psychotherapy. This model uh, produces some very interesting dynamics. I told uh, about all the transitions. This is a sudden or instantaneous jump to another attractor, which corresponds to which is called sudden gains or sudden losses in psychotherapy. Uh, we can also see that even uh, noise can create order transitions. This is possible, and this corresponds to the fact that um, treatments or uh, interventions uh, do not play such an important role as we saw up to now. Uh, what we see here in this diagram is the fact uh, that under specific conditions, um, the dynamics of the variables create critical instabilities, that is, uh, they get turbulent and they create instabilities, uh, but uh, the change in the traits is not sufficient to create reality, uh, really a jump to another attractor. So the system uh, relaxes back to the former attractor. And in another case, uh, there is a specific threshold which is uh, overdone by the traits, and the system can discontinually jump to another attractor. So the symptom severity and the uh, intensity of uh, stressful emotions decreases, and the success uh, and uh, the motivation for change increases. So we, we have an order transition, a symmetry break just here, um, and the system uh, reaches a new level of the traits, so which can be uh, understood as a personality development step. Um, and the interaction, the self-organized threshold between control and uh, all the parameters or states and traits uh, reaches and overgoes a self-organized threshold. This concept of self-organized threshold, thresholds is really important in understanding why and under which conditions uh, therapeutic change may be stable and sustainable and in other cases it uh, relapses back. Here, this is a long-term simulation. We can do simulation studies with this model now. Um, there is a system which has very high levels of symptom severity. This is the red curve. Uh, and uh, in negative emotions also, and low insight, and so on. Then the person undergoes uh, a longer treatment, perhaps uh, in a hospital, during a hospital stay, and we uh, put interventions on all five variables uh, in during this period. Then the interventions stop, perhaps the person is released uh, from an inpatient treatment, and there is a really intensive rebound effect. The symptom severity immediately increases, um, but only one kind of intervention that is on emotions, that is perhaps such things as antidepressant drugs, which continue, so the emotions are reduced for this person. Uh, this continues for a specific time, um, but this uh, creates a state which uh, produces a, a very low uh, motivation for change, um, no insight, the feelings are better, the emotions are not, but the person the person's declines from formation, no self-organizing process. If this intervention is stopped, then uh, a really a new development starts and uh, slowly the bad emotions and also the symptom severity uh, goes down and the success increases. So um, 
on the long term really a sustainable and stable effect of this psychotherapy is created. Um, we can validate this kind of model because uh, all traits and all uh, uh, variables or border parameters can be measured by an internet-based uh, system by a specific questionnaire which was developed. And if we compare the simulated dynamics, the empirical dynamics of a specific patient, we see a very uh, amazing similarity of empirical dynamics of these five variables and the uh, uh, simulated dynamics, which is created by a mathematical computer simulation. Uh, especially uh, the similarity goes up to high correlations if we respect the experienced uh, interventions or the experienced uh, events during a day, which can trigger the emotions and the symptom severity or insights of the patient. So the self-experienced um, uh, input onto the system as it is uh, seen by the patient, uh, if we respect this input vector sense, the similarity is really high and the correlations are really very high between the simulation and the computer model. Uh, here we have a small smoothing onto the variable uh, applied, a gliding averaging window of only three measurement points. So uh, this is the story of the computer simulation. In the future, we hope uh, that we can use this computer system for training psychotherapies. They can understand how complex nonlinear dynamics is working. And uh, also uh, in connecting and implementing the mathematical model into our monitoring system. Uh, the next step here uh, is on how to measure change dynamics uh, in real-world systems, that is in psychotherapy piece which are running in the hospital, inpatient treatment, or uh, in uh, outpatient psychotherapies. And what we see if we apply an app or internet-based system, the so-called synergetic navigation system, to our patients, uh, which was done in several thousands cases, meanwhile, since uh, more than one decade, uh, we see dynamics uh, which show exactly this well-known butterfly effect the sensitive dependency of the dynamics on the initial conditions. Uh, in all three diagrams, uh, we superimposed three time series, which start from, from three different uh, clients in each diagram, which, which start almost at the same uh, values for the first one, two, three, four iterations or measurement points. And then the system starts uh, to divert. They go into quite different directions. And uh, even if we know that another case started at the same values, uh, this is not helpful in predicting the dynamic long run. So this is a sensitive dependency on of the dynamics uh, on very small differences in the initial conditions. The butterfly effect uh, also in uh, real life systems of psychotherapies, which means that indeed uh, these systems cannot be predicted on the long term. They are nonlinear and they are able to create order transitions by themselves not from the outside, but really self-organized. The system we use is app-based or internet-based. Uh, it's a server-based system, which uh, uh, has uh, several different questionnaires available, um, a specific process questionnaire, the European process questionnaire, with, which was developed by our own team. 
uh, and quite different outcome questionnaires or symptom questionnaires for all kinds of disorders and diagnosis. And uh, it's also possible to create individualized questionnaires together with the patient. Here is a picture of uh, the app uh, we have available. So the system uh, is used for creating, collecting data, for visualizing the data in uh, terms of time series, and uh, for the analysis, time series analysis of uh, these processes. So the personal development project of a client is measured and monitored by the synergetic navigation system, and the system feeds back uh, the dynamics, it visualizes the dynamics, and this feedback is kind of control because it's a continuous cooperative process control because the results are continuously shown to the client and discussed with the therapist. Um, so uh, by using such kind of um, change uh, um, monitoring and visualization of the dynamics the system supports and catalyzes the personal development project of the client. What we see are time series like X axis usually is the time in terms of days, one measurement by day. Uh, and the Y axis, as the ordinate, shows the intensity of different and uh, time is here. We have the factors of therapeutic progress in one uh, client and uh, the intensity of mindfulness and self care. Uh, that's another factor of the same client. And we see here a real nice example of an order transition. Here we have critical instabilities. And here we have the before case and they jump into quite another picture. We can superimpose this time series, different items uh, from one questionnaire of a patient, different factors uh, which are created by the system, or even from different persons. So for example, in couple therapy, we can superimpose time series of uh, both partners of a couple and can show the co-evolution uh, of this uh, uh, diet of persons. What is assumed in many uh, publications um, from colleagues all, all over the world is that psychotherapies or more generally spoken uh, human change processes uh, are running on a, on a standard track. If you uh, make an average time series from different clients, for example, of a specific diagnosis, you can create by statistical means uh, overall or averaged mean time series, which is called a standard track. Uh, and persons should move uh, up to the assumption of many colleagues on such standard tracks. And who moves out of standard tracks is at risk of deterioration or at risk of dropouts. If you now um, create such a standard track time series, this is this right line here in the middle, and compare it to the real time series of specific individual clients, we see that uh, the real time series are almost always out of such standard tracks. Uh, they have higher values and they have lower values. And these higher values also are necessary because these indicate critical instabilities, which are precursors of order or pattern transitions in self-organizing systems. And uh, if we compare uh, the intensity of uh, the intensity of uh, deviations of the time series from the standard track and uh, correlates this to specific outcome measures. These are the subscale of a 
ICD-10 based uh, symptom rating, depression, anxiety, obsessive compulsive disorder, somatoform disorder, eating disorder, and so on. We see uh, no correlations that are the gray cells. Uh, the values are not significant, the correlation values, or even we see uh, positive correlations. That's the intensity of deviations from the standard track correlate positively with outcome, which can be explained by uh, the theory of self-organization. All the transitions and critical instabilities and also chaotic dynamics never run on the standard track and uh, the deviations from standard tracks are important for creating positive feedback. Uh, now, what is possible with this uh, synergetic navigation system is uh, to work in a very personalized way. Personalized psychotherapy now is uh, one of the most important development uh, and evolution uh, ways we have now because psychotherapy in former times was organized schools, uh, confessions of psychotherapy, since there were uh, treatment or diagnosis specific uh, programs, treatment programs for depression, for uh, anorectic or eating disorders, or for obsessive compulsive disorders, and so on. And now, actually, uh, we are running the way of personalized psychotherapy. That is, we do very detailed uh, case formulations, and uh, from these case form formulations, we can uh, track the change dynamics by individualized questionnaires, and we can tailor and uh, uh, and design psychotherapy proceeding proceedings. Uh, to the client and to the actual state of his dynamics. Uh, this picture shows uh, that we can create case formulations in terms of these ideographic system models, which are developed together with the client. This is a longer procedure uh, that we can define the variables, the cognitions, emotions, behaviors which are important for uh, understanding a specific problem of a client and the interactions between these variables. This is uh, r r results in such kind of system models. And we take the variables uh, which are really specific to the situation of a client, to his problem, and transform it into uh, visual analog scales to items of a personalized questionnaire. And with these items, we can create the dynamics, uh, as many items as such kind of uh, system as variables. And we can refer as uh, to the model and to the time series um, during the sessions, so during the psychotherapy sessions. Uh, clients and therapists are looking at the screen where we can see the dynamics and uh, the relates uh, what they are they intend to do to the system model. Uh, this is uh, work uh, on these uh, ideographic system models with specific uh, individualized or personalized change dynamics. Uh, so, uh, psychotherapy is an integrated feedback loop system. The basic action perception cycles, uh, which uh, are fundamental and important for our everyday life and our intended behavior, our feelings and our thinking in, in our natural environment, um, the daily self-assessments by the app or the uh, tool of the synergetic navigation system, that's a reflection on what has, what goes on in emotions or emotion regulation and so on uh, on a specific day. Then we can have a look at the dynamics in the therapy session, session by session together with the therapist, and we can visualize the dynamics on the computer screen in specific diagrams. 
uh, knows this kind of measurement and self-assessment once per day for perhaps 10 or 15 minutes, also with the option to write electronic diaries, has specific effects on the therapist. Uh, for example, uh, he can see and identify patterns uh, which could not be seen uh, without this computer technique. Um, the dynamics, uh, all the transitions, chaotic dynamics, changing synchronization between cognitions and emotions have not the quality of qualia. That this cannot really be seen in real situations uh, by looking at the client. This has no taste and has no specific optics. Expect for we make it visible by computer tools. Um, this helps for adaptive indications. That is a data driven decision on what kind of interventions and next steps uh, could be useful in a psychotherapeutic process. This gives confidence to the therapist and this relates his uh, work, his. Uh, his clinical work uh, to a series, in this case, to the series of syn uh, synergetics, that is of self-organizing dynamic systems. Mm -hmm. The side of the patient, uh, the feedback by the computer tool uh, gives confirmation of the therapeutic process. It confirms that the way is really good. This gives confidence uh, and uh, safety to the client. It's a valid feedback, uh, the emotions and cognitions, as uh, he uh, assesses or rates by himself, uh, are one-to-one -one reflected uh, by the methods and visualized. Um, this enhances motivation for change. Uh, this gives an experience of self-efficacy what I do has really consequences, uh, and this enhances uh, self-regulation of behavior and emotions. That's a feedback loop, a double feedback loop, which helps to learn how to cope with and to control emotions. And during uh, the self-assessment, 10 minutes per day, for example, uh, patients learn to differentiate between quite different emotions and in mental states, uh, and it helps to perceive uh, emotions, and uh, this is a process of learning metacognitions um, by uh, mindfulness um, meta loops on one's own consciousness. Uh, why we do Measurements one once per day uh, can be illustrated by these uh, slides, which come, which which are coming now. Uh, this slide indicates uh, that we have specific patterns, uh, which are transformed by uh, human change processes. See here, for example, uh, an emotion that's grief uh, day by day until a specific uh, day of about uh, 45 uh, days of hospital stay. Very intense uh, fluctuations, uh, very turbulent experienced emotions, and then the pattern is completely changed. And uh, if, we if we take only uh, each second measurement point, uh, these patterns start to disappear. Here we see uh, the fluctuations a little bit, uh, but on a smaller degree. And if we take each fourth measurement point, this specific pattern, the pattern transition of uh, intensive fluctuations to low fluctuations disappeared. So mm -hmm. about every seventh measurement point that is uh, an assessment once per week. Another assessment once per week, exact the same data, but other days. Uh, this is all uh, two weeks, fortnightly measurement and we can get the impression that uh, this uh, grief uh, 
intensity uh, changes to a lower level, to an increased level, or remains completely unchanged. So it really depends on when we measure, and we have to define a specific measurement rhythm, which uh, up to our experience is very good for it. It uses uh, once per day. What we see uh, is this kind of order transition. Here you see a specific pattern uh, of the head of a cork, <laughs> and uh, this changes unto a critical instability is reached, and then it turns to another peak. This is a order transition. We call it the Bavarian way of order transition. Exactly these order transitions which are prepared uh, by a critical instability can be seen uh, in the synergetic navigation system. That's what we see in many cases. Uh, that is, uh, we uh, define a running window on the time series. And in the running or gliding window, uh, we measure the amplitude of the time series, the frequency of changes, uh, and the distribution of the values over the time scale. And what we see in many cases is that at a specific period of the change process, this dynamic complexity is really increased. There is something like a peak of critical instability, uh, and then uh, the peak is reduced, and the fluctuation also is reduced. In this uh, picture, we have uh, each line as the time series of a specific item of a change questionnaire. And at this period, we see increased critical instability, so this yellow, uh, orange, and red uh, colors, increased critical instabilities during a specific and limited period of time. After this period, the dynamics uh, get much uh, uh, calmer and much uh, reduced. Exactly at this point of critical instabilities, also the symptom severity and the intensity here of the Y-box, so that is the Yale-Brown obsessive compulsive scale of an um, obsessive compulsive patient, is immediately and instantaneously reduced to a lower level. So there is no linear process, but a discontinuous process. So it is exactly what we can see in each case. Um, our results show um, that the intensity of the critical instability, that is the difference between uh, the a mean of the dynamic complexity over the complete process, and uh, the maximum of this peak, so this, this maximum mean difference, which is uh, shown uh, here in the y-axis of these diagrams, uh, directly corresponds or correlates with symptom reduction. On the y-axis, we have uh, on the x-axis here, we have uh, reduced symptom severity of 94 patients of a study we realized some years ago. And we, we see that the intensity of the critical instability uh, correlates uh, up to 0.6 uh, with symptom reduction that is with positive outcome with uh, treatment success. In the cases where the symptom severity did not change uh, but uh, increase, uh, this correlation is not uh, given. So it is not realized. We have no um, uh, co correspondence between the intensity of critical instabilities during the change process and the outcome. Um, in another study, we could see that the uh, peak of the critical instability uh, occurs just before the main intervention starts. <laughs> uh, this, in these treatments of the study, obsessive compulsive disorder patients, uh, a flooding or exposure with response prevention uh, intervention uh, or treatment 
was realized and started for each patient at a specific moment during the hospital stay. Um, and what we saw is that the critical instabilities as you after this inter intervention was realized, but before and also the symptom severity decreased before the intervention was started. This is uh, very astonishing and, and amazing. Uh, if we would expect that the treatment realizes the order transition or triggers the order transition and also the critical instabilities of the, um, of the therapeutic process, this is evidently not the case. The critical instabilities appear before and uh, create uh, the outcome. Uh, in our study, uh, we saw that uh, the intensity of uh, local complexities, that is the phenomenon of critical instabilities, low complexity, high complexity, creates more outcome in terms of symptom reduction. Here's the reduction of the Y box um, is uh, shown in re uh, reduced lines. And another important point is uh, that clients uh, who experience a good uh, emotional climate at the ward at with their uh, therapists and other patients, co-patients, fellow patients, realize better outcomes. In terms of synergetics, uh, this is um, an effect of stable boundary conditions which are necessary for the destabilizing processes of uh, self-organized uh, changes. So uh, therapeutic change, human development, is something like destabilization within the context of stability. Both is necessary, and if both is given, we get the best results uh, of uh, the outcomes. This is uh, another uh, symptom measure, uh, one factor of the therapy uh, process questionnaire with more or less the same result. Um, what we identify at, uh, as precursor of critical instabilities, that is pattern transitions, is not only critical instabilities in the dynamics of many cognitions and emotions, uh, but also an increased synchronization between the items of a process questionnaire, that is uh, emotions and cognitions are uh, synchronized and uh, this increased synchronization may be an indicator of psychopathological states and also a precursor of phase transitions during a process. This is the absolute average uh, correlation between all items of this process questionnaire, this line, and you see it is a decrease just at the moment of a phase transition. Also, uh, in, uh, specific uh, stress uh, experience, anxiety and depression, this is as a subscale, uh, depression, anxiety, stress scale, are increased just before the pattern transition takes place. This is a picture of one patient that's a, a dissociative uh, disordered identity uh, patient. And what we see is uh, that items or uh, cognitions, emotions, which refer to a specific ego state, in this case, to a child ego state of these patients are highly synchronized, positively correlated, which is indicated by the green colors. And also the items, cognitions, emotions, which refer to another state uh, that is an adult, uh, competent um, uh, state, ego state of the patients, uh, these cognitions, emotions are also completely synchronized. But the items vice versa uh, between the states are anticorrelated, which is shown by the red color of uh, correlations, so that is strong negative correlations. During this period of time, uh, those ego states dominate 
uh, what uh, s s s mental and psychological psychological functioning of this patient. And then after this transition, the pathological oversynchronization, which is dominated or enslaved by these two ego states, uh, sees a very straight pattern enslaved by two order parameters or ego states completely dissolves and the correlations uh, decrease. Uh, the pattern is uh, dissolved um, and also the symptom severity, symptom intensity is completely reduced. So we can see uh, order transitions or outcome patterns of psychotherapy uh, which are not uh, simply correlated to symptom severity and the mean levels of some questionnaires, but which have to do with pattern transition. So we have um, pre-post differences assessed by specific scores uh, of questionnaires, uh, symptom scores at the beginning high, at uh, the end very low. But we have also other indicators of changing dynamics and of outcome. For example, transition in the time series patterns, transitions in synchronization patterns, the inter-item correlation dynamics, which are shown by such kind of moving intercorrelation matrices, and also phase transitions as uh, they can be show, shown by recurrence plots, which are methods which indicate very clearly where phase transitions in a specific dynamic process with specific variables take place. Now the last uh, part of this uh, speech is on self-organization at the brain level and related uh, to self-organization to psychological uh, measures, a multi-level and multi-methods uh, project uh, on psychotherapy. Um, we tried to grasp these different levels, of course, by different methods. Uh, one method is the clinical impression we get, we, we get because we know the patients during their change process at the hospital very well, and an impression we also get by electronic diaries uh, patients are writing on their electronic diary notebook. Uh, the other level are multiple time series, uh, which are rated once per day uh, by our synergetic navigation system. Uh, these are time series from the therapy process questionnaire, and the analysis methods are on dynamic complexity, correlation pattern dynamics, recurrence plots. Uh, and this picture is once again a, a complexity resonance diagram where the vertical lines indicate critical periods of critical instability. At the brain level, we did repeated functional magnetic uh, imaging with uh, the patients. Uh, that is, they uh, underwent four to five fMRI sessions during a three to four months hospital stay. Uh, and we can have a look at the activated brain regions and the change of these activated brain regions. And uh, the modeling can be done by dynamic causal, causal modeling, for example. That is a method introduced by Carl Friston and co-workers on the effective uh, interconnectivity between specific, not so much, uh, the number of uh, localizations is limited, of course, um, but on specific interconnections. And uh, what we can see is how these effective uh, uh, interconnections between brain areas, um, effective connectivities are changing during the process. Another method uh, is uh, functional connectivity dynamics, which uses the connectome of the brain and derives uh, interbrain uh, synchronization matrix matrices. Here we have a matrix of about 80 different brain regions, 
and uh, the colors indicate the intensity of uh, the intercorrelations between this full brain model of more than 80 regions. And finally, uh, we assessed biochemical markers uh, in the blood at each uh, fMRI session or before each fMRI session. Uh, we took uh, a little bit of blood of the patients in order to analyze for uh, neuroplasticity markers like the brain derived neurotropic factor stress indicators as cortisol, but also serotonin, oxytocin, and immune parameters as interleukin uh, and tumor necrosis factors. So uh, we can span the bridge from uh, qualitative experiences of the client to psychological time series to brain dynamics and biochemical markers. What we expect here, and uh, we found it in an, uh, in an older study we realized with this paradigm, is that the brain activity changes exactly when the critical instability, the dynamic complexity occurs and is reduced. So by this uh, maximum of the dynamic complexity, we uh, defined order transitions and we see also in this patient of this brain study, the Y-box measure, the symptom severity decreased immediately after the maximum intensity of dynamic complexity. And just here from the first to the second measure, the brain activity was completely changed. Uh, later on, when the uh, dynamics was uh, reduced and the symptom severity was reduced, and no critical instabilities and order transitions took place. Uh, so there were no specific and significant changes in brain activity. Um, so just at the moment of order transitions, the maximum of uh, brain changes also take place. This was seen in nine patients uh, in a very similar way. We published this in 2013 in the PLOS One paper. Uh, a very significant effect. Um, in our actual study, we used besides standard features in a uh, symptom uh, uh, provoking uh, stimulation paradigm, we used also personalized. Uh, pictures, which we took in the home situation of the clients. We went with a digital uh, camera to the clients at home and took pictures where the obsessions and compulsions uh, really take place uh, in the home situation of the patients. And if we show these pictures uh, and compare it to uh, neutral pictures of the patients, uh, and also, if we compare it to standard pictures of uh, ICD provoking objects or situations, uh, we see a combination of uh, disorder specific activities in the brain and also self related activities of the brain. So, these this are the brain regions which are known from uh, the midline structures which indicate self-related information processing. Uh, so um, this is really what we wanted to see, that these individualized uh, pictures and situations trigger self-related information processing, which uh, changes, so is our hypothesis and expectation which changes over the course of uh, the treatment. Um, now, uh, actual brain research is interested in connectivities of the brain, um, but this is not so easy to find. Uh, what we did in a review on uh, all available connectivity studies in major depression uh, is to see if we can find some specific substrates of connectivities which are specific for major depression. Um, we uh, investigated about 60 studies 
and uh, it was not so easy um, to really integrate the results. In order to do this, we identified 17 brain regions and looked for the connectivities. And the result uh, is a little bit astonishing uh, to sum up the methods variance is bigger than the phenomenon variance. So it is depending on the methods, EEG or functional MRI, and so the stimulation uh, paradigm, for example, task-related paradigms, uh, symptom-provoking uh, 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 triggers, or resting states, uh, we have a lot of uh, different connectivities. Uh, in this matrix, we see which, how many studies indicate for a decreased uh, connectivity between specific brain regions or indicate uh, increased activity. Both occurs. Some regions are more intensely interconnected in patients than in healthy controls, and other regions are uh, uh, decreased in activity and especially in connectivity. These are the results for resting states dynamics. Uh, here we get more significant results, uh, but you see there are intensified connectivities, uh, yellow uh, bars here, uh, indicating increased interconnectivity of a specific brain region to others, and the turkey's uh, bars indicating decreased connectivity. So actually, we cannot simply say that the amygdala or the uh, prefrontal cortex or the orbitofrontal cortex or the hippocampus or other regions are more or less interconnected uh, to each other in patients than in uh, healthy controls. One reason of this uh, a little bit fussy uh, and a diverging result is uh, that these dynamics are not quiet. They are continuously moving, and uh, this movement of interconnectivity in the brain is quite fast. And at uh, at least we have to uh, to assess this connectivity dynamics. We have to measure it. We have to model it. And that's uh, what we are doing now in our project together with the colleagues uh, from Marseille, Professor Yirsa and his co-workers. Uh, these are four interconnecting uh, matrices of 80 brain areas now in obsessive compulsive disorder. We go back to this uh, diagnosis. Um, we see in the yellow, uh, orange, and red colors intensif intensified interconnections um, between specific brain areas, 80 brain areas. And this interconnectedness is decreased uh, if we look at this for four different uh, fMRI sessions with a resting state that is not a task related or a stimul picture stimulated provocation uh, paradigm, but 10 minutes of resting state with closed eyes. Um, and now what we can do is uh, to correlate this interconnection matrices that is the functional connectivity of 80 brain regions over the time. So we uh, analyze the interconnectivity and let run a um, gliding window over 10 minutes of resting state and intercorrelate the correlation matrix. So it's a little bit uh, complicated to understand. So it's the intercorrelation of intercorrelation matrices between brain areas. And if we do this, uh, we can create a new connectivity matrix, which is called functional connectivity dynamics, because the matrix shows directly uh, uh, in a time by time matrix how long the connectivity pattern remains stable. 
So these high correlations between this uh, uh, snapshot connectivity matrices shows that we have periods with higher connectivity and uh, lower uh, values of these uh, correlations between matrices in turkeys and blue colors show that the correlations are low, so it is, uh, it's uh, lower stability. What we see for two patients, and actually we are analyzing this for 17 other patients, is a hypothesis which uh, can be tested now, that the stability of brain activity, with, uh, functional brain activity between 80 different brain areas uh, is higher at the beginning. So it is an indication of repetitive, stable, uh, not unflexible brain activity, uh, which perhaps refers uh, to ruminations or obsessions uh, of the patient. And this uh, red colored picture, this stable interconnectivity picture, uh, changes over time. And so the turquoise and blue colors dominate the brain activity and perhaps also the related cognitive activity gets more and more flexible. And, uh, patients can change the, uh, the cognitions in 10 minutes of uh, resting state and hopefully also in their everyday life. Uh, the idea of interconnection between variables uh, also was taken uh, for the interaction between uh, items of a personal questionnaire of patients. Uh, we can intercorrelate the items the time series which are created by answering the items once per day. And we can intercorrelate these matrices and see when specific dynamics of a system remain stable. And this corresponds very well to recurrence plots so from the same questionnaire. So we have two different ways of showing how uh, patterns in uh, cognitive dynamics are changing over the time. It follows, it follows the same idea that uh, intercorrelation matrices themselves are intercorrelated, and uh, this shows uh, where the dynamics in this case of questions which are answered once per, per day. Uh, these patterns remain stable and get into another kind of dynamics. So uh, this should be a proof that we can understand mental, behavioral, emotional processes uh, with the same theoretical concepts and also the same methods, despite we have quite different measurement devices and qualities of time series, but uh, the, measure, the, the, the analysis tools and the basic concepts of all the transitions of critical instabilities, of precursors, of changing synchronization between these uh, dynamics is quite similar. And this is perhaps what uh, science can produce to reduce complexity by unifying paradigms and unifying concepts at quite different uh, levels and uh, system qualities. Thank you very much for your attention, and uh, I'm open to your questions. Thank you, Dr. Shitek, for that informative presentation. I would also like to thank LabRoots for making today's educational webcast possible. Before we go, I want to let everyone know that this webcast will be available for on-demand viewing through June 14th, 2019. And as a final reminder, our speaker will follow up with any questions you've submitted via email. That's all for now. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you next time. Goodbye.